the farmer's son who built the legendary Ford. Innovators change the world. It involves taking new ideas, sometimes their own, sometimes other people's, and developing and promoting them until they're accepted as a part of daily life. Innovation requires self-confidence, a taste for taking risks, leadership ability, and a vision of the future. Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company, possessed all these qualities. It was years before he was able to fully develop them. His beginnings were quite ordinary. Born July 30th, 1863, he grew up on his father's farm in Dearborn, Michigan. As a young man, Ford displayed many qualities that would later make him successful, powerful, and famous. In becoming friends with the operators of steam engines, he became familiar with the full-sized engines. Ford, along with a group of boys, organized a project to make water wheels and steam engines. By repairing watches himself, he learned the rudiments of machine design by studying the manuals that accompanied the watches. The young Ford displayed mechanical ability, leadership skills, and an ability to learn by trial and error. They thus became the foundation for his entire career. Ford could follow in his father's footsteps and become a farmer, but young Henry was intrigued by machines and ready to take risks to pursue that curiosity. In 1879, when he was just 16 years old, he left the farm to become an apprentice at the Michigan Car Company, an automobile manufacturer in Detroit. Over the next two and a half years, he held several jobs of similar nature, sometimes changing jobs where he felt he could gain more experience elsewhere. After returning home in 1882, he did little farming. Rather, he worked on tractor steam engines for farmers, occasionally in factories in Michigan, and cut and sold timber on 40 acres of his father's land. Ford was now demonstrating another characteristic, the desire to work on his own rather than as an employee. In 1888, Henry Ford married Clara Bryant, and in 1891, they moved to Detroit, where Henry was hired as a night engineer by the Edison Electric Illuminating Company. Ford knew little about electricity. He only saw this job as a learning opportunity. A few months later, Clara gave birth to Edsel Bryant Ford, the couple's only son. With his apt learning abilities, two years later, Henry rose to become chief engineer of the Illuminating Company by 1896. However, he had other interests. As part of a huge effort by many people across the country to create horseless carriages, he got to work in barns and small shops. In 1896, with the help of a group of friends, he completed his first self-propelled vehicle, the Quadricycle. It had four wire wheels resembling heavy bicycle wheels, a tiller used for steering, and two forward speeds without a reverse. In 1898, a second car was added. In this case, Ford demonstrated an essential capability for future success being able to articulate a vision and convince others to join him in achieving it. A group of businessmen backed him in the riskiest venture of his life, to build and sell horseless carriages. The problem was that Ford wasn't familiar with running a business, and trial and error was the only way to learn. The first company, as well as the second, failed miserably. Ford once said, Failure is simply an opportunity to begin again, this time with greater understanding. For the sake of reviving his fortunes, Ford began building and racing race cars. With the success of these cars, Henry Ford attracted additional financial backing, and on June 16, 1903, he established the Ford Motor Company. As with his car manufacturing, he also introduced a revolutionary assembly line that changed the car industry forever. At that time, cars were only available to the wealthy. Even though transportation was a daily necessity for everyone, it was regarded as an expensive toy for the wealthy. Production costs were high, and car production was still in its infancy. Thus, owning a car was a privilege reserved for the wealthy. Until Ford built its assembly line. Ford Motor Company was founded by Henry Ford with the vision of making quality cars accessible and affordable to all. There was no easy road to this American dream. In the beginning, the company produced automobiles the traditional way. But when the time it took to finish a unit and the materials it needed led to an increased price, they had no choice but to compensate for these costs. It took the company 12 hours to complete one automobile, which cost the company labor and time. As a result, Ford started to make cars differently. To create a unit, he identified stages or steps. Then, he dispersed his workers into different stages. Using a conveyor belt, each car was moved from one stage to another until all parts were in place. As a result, 
the traditional 12-hour period was significantly cut down to 2 hours and 30 minutes. In turn, the system decreased the cost of the car. Their most popular car model, the Model T, had its price reduced from $850 to $290. As a result of this new system, the automobile industry changed completely from luxury items exclusive to the rich to a necessity accessible to everyone. Ford Motor Company sales soared until they supplied 50% of automobiles in the United States. As a result of interference from the other investors in the company, Henry decided to buy them out in 1919. Now, several new Detroit millionaires were created, as well as Henry Ford, the only owner of the world's largest automobile corporation. Ford named his 26-year-old son Edsel as president, but the job was actually handled by Henry Ford himself. The success of his business convinced him that his own intuition was superior, and he continued to believe that people wanted the Model T the most. Despite the growing popularity of more expensive, stylish, and comfortable cars like the Chevrolet, he refused to listen to Ford executives Edsel and John, who said that some new model was needed. Despite Henry Ford's best efforts, his sales figures began to drop by the late 1920s. Soon, Ford stopped building Model Ts and began designing an entirely new car. In 1927, the Model A was born. Because it was such a radical departure from Ford's previous offerings, the company decided to call it by the beginning of the alphabet, the Model A. During World War II in 1939, Ford, who was passionately opposed to war, fought to keep the US from taking sides. But after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Ford Motor Company grew into one of the world's largest military contractors, supplying planes, engines, jeeps, and tanks. However, Henry Ford was aging and losing influence. Following Edsel Ford's death in 1943, Henry Ford officially gave control of the company to Henry II, his son. Henry Ford laid the foundations for the 20th century. On April 7, 1947, Henry I died at his Dearborn estate, Fair Lane, at age 83. One of the most prophetic stories is how Henry Ford, who was 13 at the time, got a pocket watch for his birthday and proceeded to take it apart. He was curious about how it worked. Ford carried this trait throughout his life. He was curious about how things worked, as well as why they didn't work. Ford was interested in everything around him. Through his exploration of innovative methods of learning, he founded the Edison Institute, which is today known as the Henry Ford Institute. Ford gathered dozens of buildings and millions of artifacts in one place. It was the largest collection of its kind ever assembled and represented a bold and ambitious approach to helping people of all ages understand and appreciate the American experience. With inspiration from the past, a vision of the future, and a belief that technology could improve people's lives, Henry Ford created the Ford Motor Company. For him, technology was not just a source of profit, it was a way to harness new ideas and ultimately democratize American life. So that was the story of how a farmer's son built the legendary Ford Motors. How will your story unfold? Let us know what your favorite part was in the comments below. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Thank you.